There we go. Um, so, yeah, so today we are on our Joel 6610. Tom, you can spin the camera around and get a nice little view. So, so far we've been using um, our Joel 7001, which is in the different corridor. Um, but today we've got this little guy. Um, so it works kind of the same way, um, but rather than having a field emission gun at the top shooting electrons down, we have um, a tungsten filament, which is kind of like an old fashioned light bulb. Um, and that's what's making our electrons. So this one's quite nice because it has an extra feature, which is a variable vacuum. So we can look at things um, at low vacuum and also high vacuum. So if you've got something that doesn't really behave well um, and under vacuum or when it's being bombarded with electrons, uh, we can kind of accommodate for that a little bit in here. But it doesn't seem to be a problem today. We've got some festive plants, we've got some spices um, and we've coated them in gold. So they're nice and conductive and very shiny. Um, and I'll probably be more festive Very now, festive, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually really good. Um, so don't if you spin us back round, um, we will get going. So we've got seven samples all up today, but we're saving one to last because it's our favorite. Um, but if you in the audience would like to suggest a number between one and six, we'll go on a mystery tour. Um, so we're using secondary electrons today. So just either plug your answer in the chat or um, just unmute and talk to us. That's also fine. Um, Six. Oh god, now I've got to count. <laughs> oh, left, I think it's six. Six. Oh no, it's in, it's in the middle. Yeah, it's not in a logical place on that. Like a backwards G today. Um, so today we're using secondary electrons. Um, so what we're doing is we're looking at the surface of samples. Um, so it gives you a really good sense of topography. Um, so what we'll do is like feel free to have a guess. It is plant, but if you've got a particular sort of festive plant, you think it could be. We'll see, and I will try and get something in focus. <laughs> um, so it works kind of the same as all the other microscopes do. Um, so we have to zoom in, get it in focus, and we zoom out a little bit, and then the whole picture's in focus. Um, so what we're doing, again, is we'll be taking photos. We'll put them all in a book before you, so you'll have everything um, in the background. So if you do have any ideas of what this is, talk it in the chat, and we'll see. Uh, if not, I'm sure we'll unveil the mystery at some point. Yeah, so secondary electrons are often, you can describe them as like you're looking at a sample on an overcast day. It's that sort of, uh, same sort of contrast you, you get there. Um, oh, Elaine has there. nailed it, isn't it, Holly? <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what a good start. So this is, yeah, it's a holly leaf. Um, so we have freeze dried our leaves. Um, so we gave them a little bath in some liquid nitrogen. Uh, then my colleague, Glenn, sort of slapped it really hard so it broke. Um, so this kind of sort of like gray rectangle at the bottom there, that's like the underside of the leaves. So it's quite nice and smooth. This is the inner vascular system of the leaf. And we do have like a little cheat sheet for the leaf structure because I do rocks, Tom does semiconductors. So we're yeah, digging, <laughs> digging on some very, uh, very rusty biology, but I, uh, I believe uh, we are looking at some, uh, some mesophyll the leaf, so the sort of inner inner structure. We're looking at the uh, underside of the leaf here, but this is a bit that's been shattered open. Um, so you've got these sort of spongy areas that allow the uh, the air to pass through. Uh, and because we've lost all the all the water, you can see how how open it is now. Well, let's take a photo of that because I've actually got the focus pretty good today. And then we can really like zoom in and have a look at this a little bit closer, then have a look at the bottom of the leaf as well. It's very spongy. Yeah, spongy mesophyll, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, oh, filled with pH, I just assumed it was like the infill rather than chlorophyll sort of fill. Yeah, so these uh, these bits are all the uh, sort of chloroplasts and everything live. Yeah, I believe. Uh, and, uh, if we look at the, the surface of the underside of the leaf, you can see some things that look suspiciously like Jen's Christmas jump. They do. It is actually pretty, pretty yeah. accurate. Yeah, the ISR on it is everywhere. Yeah. Um, so on the screen we've got a few at the moment, so you can see um, the electron emissions coming through. You can also see our sample holder here, so as we drive around you'll see this little block whirling around the microscope. We've also got a top-down view, um, so we can choose um, where to go on our sample without, without having to remember where everything is, which is actually really useful. Not all our machines have that. Um, we've also got like a little schematic showing us how high up our sample is um, in the microscope, so we don't accidentally drive it into itself. Because uh, that's very expensive, but also very embarrassing to get a service engineer out because you've broken your machine by driving into it. 
Not well, advised. No. no, luckily none of us have done it. So say that. There's, there's still time. There's still time. I, I think we'll be fine. We're all too paranoid. About yeah. It. <laughs> Yeah, you never want to be the person that breaks it because like, you'll never be at the end of it. Oh, slow scan. This is now the underside of the holly leaf. So these are all stoma, I think they're called. Yeah, so yeah, all, the, all the stomata there, um, which uh, is how the, the plant transpires. Um, so you can see the sort of guard cells around, and they do just look, uh, look a bit like the. Uh, what donuts? Saron on there. Uh, yeah, we're bit. all wearing our ugly Christmas jumpers. So I've got a Springs one. Tom's got a festive Jaws version, which is. I, I object to it being called a, an ugly it, jumper. I think this Christmas is film? the best item of uh, clothing I own. But, uh... <laughs> We've got Dan upstairs somewhere wearing a Star Trek one. Yeah. Uh, so we're covering all our bases. Mine like yeah, is less garish, mainly because I did not join in that group order for <laughs> garish Christmas jumpers, but I own enough. So. Although That's really good. Unfortunately, you can't see any of our lab decorations from this angle, but I assure you that the lab is covered. Snowflakes galore. Tastefully plastered in uh, in Christmas decorations. Yeah. Using our 3D printing privileges for good. Yeah, if you've got time, you should bring some of them across and show everybody. I will do that at the end. Like, they are, they are beauty to behold. Because, yeah, Alex, our 3D printing master. Mm -hmm made some pretty cool ones, which I'm sure they'll show you. We're very pleased. Excited for them. Yeah. I can't hold that at all worse. So one issue that I often have with microscopes is that I can't wear my glasses with a mask on. Um, so what I think is in focus, may actually not be in focus for people with better eyesight. That's so pretty good. Everything looking steamy, but yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> like, <laughs> that one. <laughs> so see that even like on these spongy bits, that's just still like quite a lot of texture. Yeah, and some of the other cool. samples we're gonna have a look at as well have a texture that certainly I didn't, I didn't realize was there. Yeah. It, so. Let this one photograph. Mm -hmm. so, so the photographs on a really slow scan speed so we can get lots of detail in um this one's quite handy because it has a little orange bar that tells you how far down it is and how ready how far it's got left to go the microscope we've been using so far our 7001 doesn't do that you just have to wait and eventually it'll tell you that it's finished yeah uh, so this one's actually quite nice and user friendly um yeah. having used this machine more is um it's a nice one i quite like it by the so what's happening is the beam is just spending longer in each spot in each pixel, so then you get more signal uh, relative yeah. to the noise for each bit. So it just looks a lot smoother. Yeah. So if we do a compare, so if I turn it down to a slower scan speed, it's a little bit fuzzier, it's a bit pixely, bit jittery. Then we can like slow that down and we can get a nice crisp image, um, which is kind of the point of electron microscopy. No point using electrons if you're not going to have it in focus um, and at stupidly high magnifications. <laughs> and I say that as if 200 is. <laughs> A lot. It's not. It's, it's all we need for geology, Jen. Yeah. So I we can really go above 100. <laughs> Got disagreements in the lab about what length scales are. We <laughs> so everything I look at is very, very small. Everything the geologists look at is very, very big. So we, uh, Paula sent, um, sent him, uh, a question in the chat saying, does moisture in the object affect image quality? Yes. Putting yeah. wet things into an electron microscope is not a great idea. No. Um, they tend to bubble, um, they damage, they outgas a lot. Uh, yeah. So what we try and do is put everything in as dry as possible. So we freeze dried these leaves, um, which also means we can then break them apart and get like these nice sort of like crisp images. Yeah. Um, yeah, putting wet things in an SEM doesn't work particularly well. And what we're, we're doing with this sort of um, freeze drying rather than just a normal freezing, but if you, if you put anything, uh, I don't know if you put some, some beans in the, uh, in the freezer or you tried to cool down uh, Cool down something fizzy uh, too quickly, uh, or in the in, sorry, in the freezer, and that ends up bursting open uh, because ice obviously expands, and that would destroy uh, the structures we're trying to look at. So here, you cool them very very quickly um, using um, liquid nitrogen, something like that, and that gives you a uh, it sort of freezes quicker than it can form the ice crystals, and you get um, a sort of glassy structure that then you can remove that sublime away the uh, 
that now sort of glassy ice at low pressure and you, you still have the, the structure you're, you're looking at, hopefully. Yeah, so it's a really good way to preserve small things and biological samples. Because um, unfortunately, a lot of nature is quite wet when you think about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it also means we get to have some fun with the gas that is liquid nitrogen because that just looks very ominous. Yeah, it's good fun. It's a, it's a great day when we get the liquid nitrogen. Uh, Thank you. Hang on, wait. Do we have another number? So we've done six. We're saving seven till the end. Um, we've got numbers one through five. We'll see where we go next. Three. Three? Three. One, two, three. Oh, no, I've got to drive over the pool thing. <laughs> We're going to go for a detour. <laughs> no surprises here. So you can see this is our stage moving around yeah, no inside the microscope. Questions. Uh, which is pretty cool. It's nice that you can see it moving around. And of course, all these um, little schematics update as we go. Just to try and uh, avoid you driving into anything. Yep. Yeah, you don't want to crash your microscope. Another uh, very wrinkly, highly textured. Uh, yeah, so up here. feel free to take a guess. I'll... From I'm not sure that view helps much more, actually. <laughs> it helps if you know what you're looking at, if but you, if you don't, yeah. then it's... Uh... It, it looks like a brain from... It does. It yeah. is a brain, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm more uh, almost in dark as everybody else, because I vaguely know what's in here, because I help yeah. do examples, but I don't know what's what, and where's what number. It would, uh, it would help if you could smell it. So. Yeah. Smell it. Oh, okay. Ooh. Natalie. Uh, Natalie, crushing it today. It is a clove. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, it's the part of the mulling spices I commandeered from our facility director. Uh, Tom very <laughs> kindly cut this one in half for me, stuck it down, and then covered it in gold. But yeah, it turns out really wrinkly. Actually, <laughs> quite upsettingly so. Uh, this um, one's stuck on with uh, with silver paint and gold, so it's double. Oh, double festive. oh extra festive. Super festive. Very expensive bit of spice now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it turns out cloves. Really, really wrinkly. Uh, so I'm just going to zoom all the way in and get a bit of focus. So secondary electrons are also really good for getting a, um, like a depth of field. So things that have texture and have topography, you can kind of focus through it and get like um, some quite dramatic pictures. So now if you zoom out, that whole thing should be in focus, in theory. So we'll because you're there. working with a very, very narrow beam <sighs> electrons, it passes through a series of um, apertures and holes in the column to make it or a very narrow um, top of your resolution, but that means that your uh, the sort of depth over which you uh, your beam is sort of small enough to get a focus point is is a lot um, a lot greater than a light microscope. So yeah, which is really cool. But you can see it on um, sort of coming into like that slow scan speed as we photograph it. Um, all those details looking much neater. So I have Great. a very nice smelling petri dish upstairs full of clothes. <laughs> But it's not often we get nice smelling samples. It's there not. Are... I mean, we've had some pretty awful things in these microscopes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, it smells a lot nicer than the average. So. Yeah. I think we had some bees once that might have been dead for a little bit too long or just oh. went in a vacuum. Which is probably geez, it's yeah. not bad enough. They they weren't dried uh, as, as well as these were, so yeah, there was a little a little yeah, a bit pungent. So this is kind of like the top end of the clove. So this is where the flower is. I guess it's a flower. Yeah. The little bobbly a, bit at the end. It was a flower. Um, yeah, it turns maybe? out. It is um, upsettingly wrinkly. <laughs> I don't I don't know why it ever, it, it never occurred to me that like, of course it is, why wouldn't it be? Well, yeah, it was, it's been dry. So <laughs> when you think about it, it makes sense, but it's still yeah, upsetting to look at. It's another example as if these were just dried normally, then you do you do get that sort of change in structure that perhaps you yeah. you wouldn't have with the same change in the contrast. So, proper freeze drying. Yeah. So an extra fun feature about this microscope is it has um, options to do auto contrast brightness, so it will work out um, the settings it thinks are best. It's also got an auto focus button and an auto stick button. Yeah. Um, and these actually work really yeah. well. <laughs> The 7001 has auto contrast and brightness and it puts it on the it worst setting. Like you just lose the image, like it's too bright or it's too dark. It's like, why? 
yeah. but that is the nature. Sometimes the setup just doesn't work on other things. Yeah. Like a tiny microscopist trapped inside the computer helping out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have wildly different ideas about what things should look like. Um, but it's exciting good. when it does work. Yeah. Um, but it's a 66 is actually a very forgiving instrument. It's, um, yeah. We use this one for teaching. It behaves itself when we teach. Um, it is a really nice little thing. Yeah, it's not it, quite so fussy as some of our other microscopes, and it's a lot easier to focus. So ours is quite old, um, which does mean when we are driving around, it makes the loudest sounds possible. So it sounds really unhealthy, but it does work very well. Yeah. Does even know that it's uh, it's working. So yeah, that's a clove. Yeah, not sure I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and we got, oh, nice. So got numbers one, two, four, and five. Yes. Okay, if we have any preference, and if not, I will pick something. Five. Oh, we're on five. 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 Zoom across, watch the stage swing by. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's a load of emails coming in for me all at once. <laughs> uh, so this one. I can't tell. I can't tell what I'm looking at. That's not in focus at all. Yes, yeah, so there's less. Uh, it's terrible, Jen. There's less to see on this one. Yeah. Uh, so this one we will tell you. Um, this is the top side of a holly leaf. Is the spike still on it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so there is a. Oh, there it is. Thing. So you don't have the. Uh, I believe you don't have the sort of collection of stomata in the same way on the top of the leaf. So it's more. Yeah. It's just sort of waxy. Oh. We do have this. Uh, this is why holly leaves really hurt. Uh, <laughs> This one was embedded in my thumb for quite a while yesterday. Yeah, very spiky. But, uh, yeah, if you look at the radius at the end, it is, uh, it is quite a tight point. Zoom all the way in. Oh. How wide is that across? That's kind of really um, small. Radius of curvature is probably like 30 microns or something. Yeah. So, um, so the 50 micron scale bar at the bottom here. Yeah. So that pretty, is pretty sharp. So that's 0 0.003 millimeters. No, 0. Point, what was it? 0 0.03. I always get confused. Uh, 0, 0. <laughs> 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, I was right the first time. So very small. <coughs> Why it hurts? Like uh, it's like a few a few sort of uh, stamped human hairs together. Yeah. It's, uh, so maybe we should do. Um, like a needle versus spikes okay. and for comparison. Yeah. You do it. Ah, oh, and and need not ne needle nettle stinging nettle. Yes. They're really spiky, and they've oh. got like, their spikes of like silica, I think, on them as well. So they're like okay. really really mean. Yeah, I think. Birds as well. They're always a little velcro. Yeah. Well, maybe next Oops. year we'll do a spiky plant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look all the different spikes we can find. Just the dangers of a walk in the park. Yeah. So our um, <laughs> next. Um, microscopy live is at the end of January um, and we're going to be looking at pet hair so we're all going home for Christmas and bringing back bits of our pets um, so at the very least we'll have about three different dogs to compare yeah uh, we've got all sorts and we'll compare it to some hair that we have in the lab already very like texture yeah. on this like um, so yeah. if you do have any particular pets of yours that you would like us to have, do feel free to send us a pet hair or scales or skin or whatever it is that your pet has um, and we'll give it a whirl I hope so. To see where the uh, sort of edge of the edge of the spike separates into two uh, two branches there. I can't tell if that's getting better or worse. It's worse. It was, it was getting worse. <laughs> that's focusing work. Yeah, a lot to... Uh, smoother on the top here than uh, when you see on the underside of the leaf. It's quite bumpy actually, isn't it? You can get pressure some bumps. So the little mogul field or something. Just, uh... yeah. It's very smooth. 
like overall. Go to that one. So yeah, so that's Holly. Yeah. And uh, you can feel a bit better over if you if you get caught on it in the next uh, next few weeks now because it's it's just legitimately very pointy. So yeah. you're allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely designed for mischief and mayhem. Let like this one finish, and then down to one, two, and four. And then the mystery guest. I think we're tired of this. Yeah, well, it's less of mystery because I spoiled it on Twitter because I got too excited. <laughs> it's really cool, and it's our Twitter header, so you know, made sense to share. Yeah, it. I think that that image. Either has been posted three or four times this week, or will be posted okay. many times in the next two weeks. It is the season. Have a look. At it's the season, indeed. If there is just anything, anything of interest on the leaf. So this SAM has a function uh, where you can focus either coarsely or fine, which means you can make big focus changes um, to get roughly in the right ballpark, and then you can narrow down and do like the little final twinges, which is really useful. It means you're not spinning dials for 10 minutes trying to get stuff um, in the right place. I mean, that's pretty unremarkable. That's a shame. You can see the contrast know. between the, the yeah. top and the bottom. It's, uh... so you can find a nice bit, we'll get like a nice photo. Somewhere. Oh, there is a bit of texture actually. You can see it as the leaf curls round. What is that, Thomas? Ah, tiny volcano. Could be. I could, I could believe that. Somewhere. Yeah. And that's that spongy um, mesophyll again. So this is now seeing it from the top side down. Um, I wonder if it's like one of those sort of like veins that runs. Yeah, some veins and ribs along there. Yeah. Um, we can have a few. That can be a nice picture. Was in the top. Let's see if that actually focus. That I will take a photo of that one. That's like a nice little, all the textures all at once sort of comparison. So what are the what are the numbers we've got left now? Uh, one, two, and four. One, two, and four, wasn't it? Zigzag about. Oh, number four? Four. Yes. Four. We'll let this photograph and then we'll get number four, which. Four is a personal favourite. So, yeah. you know, good book. <laughs> Quite fond of it. Mostly for the. Uh, Jen and I, as, as not biologists, were learning the names of things yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, Oranges some, some have specific names. words. It's great. It's like, yeah, it was really weird. They sound like fake names for things, but I'm fully ready to commit to them. I suppose you could say that for most sciences. Like, yeah. We all have very weird and specific words for things that just don't sound real. Yeah, I don't know. Some of these were like pretty, pretty odd. Um, so let's go. I'll make we start at this end and we work across. Mm -hmm. Out as far as we can go. If you'd like to hazard a guess as to what says, feel free. Bear in mind it has had all the water sucked out of it, so it's probably not going to be overly obvious. Um, or do you like a gentle drive across the sample. There's kind of like three sections in this one. So we've got kind of that smooth bit. Got another spongy sort of situation. Then we have some holes. The outer layer three. And then the outer layer. Kind of smooth and rubbery. Is it a leak? Uh, not a leak, no. This is a dried orange, part of the Mulling Spice collection. Um, so if we go back to the first part, I'll just let it drive through. So this is like the inside of the orange, that orange bit that you eat. Um, sort of juicy vesicles. Yeah, unfortunately uh... completely now devoid of juice. <laughs> it's dried. Um, but if you imagine these things like all sort of like full of water, I guess it makes a bit more sense, kind of like balloons. 
see what we can do. And this piece was handily sort of a uh, been sliced in a diagonal or something, so everything's sort of spread out, so you can yeah. really see that separation see the layers of, really the, nicely. of layers. I'm not sure why it would be a good bit to get a photo of this. Probably like a fully zoomed out version. It's yeah, quite big we, features. Uh... So the minimum magnification on this microscope is 27 times, um, which is still pretty large. <laughs> uh, it's quite close up for most things. Um... Just start to see the edges of the uh, light scatter detector and the edges of the yeah. image there. So there. Kind of like this sort of like dark shadow around the edge, that sort of ring. Um, that's the edges of our detector. Uh, so giving us the sort of like collaring effects. Um, you'll see that on all the microscopes, if you zoom out far enough, so on R7000, it gives like a fisheye effect, um, which when you're not expecting, suddenly you panic that everything is out of focus. So the maximum magnification of this microscope is something ridiculous. Like in theory, SEMs can get up to a million time magnification, which is quite a lot. Yeah, this one I've never your... tested, but it does 10,000. I'm zooming. Yeah, we'll just see where it goes. See what so the, we get. Uh, so there's a sort of distinction between what you can, what magnification you can go up to, and what magnification it's sort of useful to go up to. Yeah. So we normally talk in, in terms of. Um, they watching this number here at the sort bottom. Of resolution. So the smallest, um, smallest points we can resolve. Uh, so that looks like it goes up to three hundred thousand times, times, which is quite a lot. Which is probably uh, optimistic to get a. Yeah, like orange... a tungsten instrument, but some of our some of our um, field emission instruments, which have a, a sort of much smaller source, um, much smaller, brighter um, sort of spot of electrons they can generate, uh, we will definitely in the sort of half a million range we can get useful useful information. Um, but, uh, so this is like the white part of the orange. The, this is the pith. Um, or as we now know, the albedo. The albedo, yes, which is uh, the albedo coupled with the uh, the flavido, which, which is, is the, the, the rind. Um, <laughs> sound like a sort of pair of uh, performing siblings or something. It's a wonderful yeah. name. So. so albedo, is that like the same word as you would use for like albedo effect? So the... Yep, spelt the same. Why? Why I don't are you the same words for different things? Some citrus scientist at some point decided that this is white and has an albedo, therefore we're going to call it albedo. I mean, and then, yeah, then we've got to come up with a name for the orange bit. Yeah. Flavido. I hope it's flavido <laughs> because it's where all the flavour is. I hope so. And the, uh, so you have the little um, little sort of pockets with your uh, orangey orange. oils in there, which you can just see at the interface in a little bit. Yeah. So this um, is quite a different texture um, to the inside orange. So imagine when you're peeling an orange, that pithy bit can get quite stringy and quite sort of fibrous um and yeah like it's got quite it's quite dense but it's still like very sort of spongy in there which i guess makes sense i have already called a file number 10 you're right there we go double figures yeah uh, yeah does also have a like a scientific name, or have we not been told that? So what was that, Laura? A fleshy, like the the bit with all the juice. The does juice vesicles. Juice vesicles. Okay. So we're little pockets. Yeah. Um, oh, here we go. Here are some wedge. oil sacks. <laughs> now, sadly, devoid of uh, that lovely orange oil. Yeah. Let me find some good ones. Let's zoom in a bit on. Oranges. Yeah. It's got this really fine sort of like mesh network still. Like that one photograph. Um, yes, we're now at the albedo flavido interface. Good that name for an indie album, wasn't it? I think. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think albedo and flavido are much better names than pith and rind. I think yeah. we should uh, a campaign to get them in common parlance. Yeah, so these samples aren't great if you have trypophobia, unfortunately. Um, that seems to be the way of a lot of biological stuff, actually. Everything is full of holes. 
Um, these are quite large. Because that's about half a millimeter across. Yeah. A bit more, maybe. Natalie is asking: Does freeze drying preserve oil droplets? Um, I'm not sure. We could definitely give it a whirl. So, so this one came out of yeah. a sorry, Tom. These ones came out of like a package that you can buy in supermarket. So I think these were like regularly air dried. But we could definitely try freeze drying an orange. I think hitting with a hammer afterwards would be much more fun. I think you probably would. Probably more, more like you know, still volatile enough to be to be lost. But if we if we're wanting to look at things that were were once liquid in the SEM, we tend to uh, to do cryo um, cryo SEM. So on this instrument as well, it has a, a sort of box and a, a bit of kit bolted on the side where you can uh, look at stuff at cryogenic temperatures. And um, we've used that to look at a lot of dairy products, um, things like ice cream, cheese uh, look quite nice. Also full of holes. Um, but different holes, but, uh, and, uh, and then you can you can see all the sort of fat droplets preserved. So you uh, sort of freeze your freeze your sample, um, and then sort of smash it with a little stick um, once it's once it's all cold to reveal the, the inside. And uh, then there's a little built-in coater to, to put some platinum on the surface so it's conductive. And then you can uh, you can look at stuff that's um, in the liquid phase because you've frozen it very very quickly in a um, in a liquid nitrogen slush, it's uh, it's still got the same structures that locked in and frozen in time. The glass. So I think we have plans for Microscopy Live next year to do some cryo. We'll have like a dedicated um, cryo SEM session because uh, it's really fun, um, and we have to do it once in a while to make sure that it still works. Um, it's it's really fun actually. Um, it's a cool bit of science. So those are the oil droplets. Then this side is the rind. Yeah. The, the flavido. The flavido. <laughs> again, like another really different texture. It's very smooth. And leathery almost. Yeah, well, I suppose if you kind of dried, uh, dried yes. it, does feel a bit leathery. So. Pretty good. Mm. Now we're in the trying to work out which bit do I want to focus on? Is it in focus or am I just not wearing my glasses? <laughs> That's probably okay. Uh, yeah, so this orange is kind of like cut through at an angle. So actually getting like quite a nice sort of widespread of all the different textures in there. Let this one load in. Mm -hmm. 25 to perfect timing. Probably do number one next and number two because they're related. And so okay. that one, zero, one, four. Unfortunately, it's like the outside bit of the orange, much less exciting than the inside bits, it would seem. Sort of nice that the uh, the bit of an orange that nobody really wants when you're when you're eating it is also the most that it's the most fun to look at. So yeah. In the middle. Right. So I think we should do number two, maybe. Mm -hmm. Can you remember which program we put them? Uh, I think, think my other curve, yeah, but um, we'll find out. Yeah, they they look different. There goes the clove. Past our wrinkly clove. The yeah, upsetting. Yep, this is the top. So back in leaves. Mm, back firmly in Christmas uh, or yep. sort of festive uh, festive period territory. Yep. Um, so we got some pine. Pine leaves. So these came from our facility director's Christmas tree. Uh, she brought me in a whole stick. Um, I have used two leaves <laughs> of that entire branch. Uh, so again, we freeze dried these. Oh, definitely out of focus. Let's try the auto sticks. 
see if that'll, that'll give me a hand. That's much crisper. So that's the top of a pine leaf. Um, I guess the thing about pine leaves, like they are pretty, like they're small, but they are pretty smooth. So I guess sort of like almost like a complete lack of features makes sense. Quite a cuticle layer on. Yeah. So as, as with the holly, there was, there was less going on on the top. So uh, I've got like a bit of texture happening there. Like that divot into the middle. With some lines. Not sure what the lines are. Maybe go faster. I I <laughs> go faster to pipe some crystal fruit. Ooh, too far. There we go. It's not a very tiny Christmas tree here. So I'm just messing around with the contrast and brightness to try and get everything nice for the eyes. Uh, so every um, microscopist has like personal ways that they like their brightness contrast set up and it varies between materials but even people looking at the same thing will like have very different hey, ideas. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought I heard noises. I was like I couldn't decide like, we're not here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so for rocks I find contrast and brightness pretty easy because you've got lots of different minerals yeah. to look at um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, harder to do with plants when you're everything's kind of the same and you're looking at the shape of it more than anything. Um, it's, could be pretty hard to get the balance right. There's a top of pine leaves, not hugely inspiring, it turns inspiring. out. But I've got high hopes for the uh, for the bottom and decide underdog. <laughs> I, I will just drive over to that leaf and we'll see. I'll just make the scan speed faster, otherwise I get very motion sick if this drives around if I don't. <laughs> So bottom pine leaf, off the bat, looks largely the same. We've got a little bit more texture going on, a little bit more colour. Expect to see more of those uh, little openings as well. Well. Uh, we'll, take a, we'll take a photo of that guy. Yeah. Lily's but, asking, would a different microscope show it in colour? Is it just black and white? And all of our microscopes will show everything in black and white. Just because rather than lights, we're using electrons. And obviously with, with electrons, you're not using that light spectrum. So we can only see it in grayscale. Someone might want to say that more technically, but. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're looking at the, you're, look, you're, you're recording the intensity from each spot. So your, your um, beam scans across a bit like an old fashioned um, CRT television and just scans across in a, in a, the camera is in a raster <laughs> and at each spot, you have various detectors that can tell you how many electrons you're detecting coming back at that spot. Um, so we're using a detector here as a little um, sort of charged cage to attract these um, lower energy secondary electrons back. Mm -hmm. And that um, the reason that you get sort of contrast on the sort of topography of the surface roughness of the sample, if you have, um, I'm going to use this handy bit of hand sanitizer as a prop. <laughs> if you have, uh, say, your detector over here, and then your electron beam comes over here, you'll get fewer electrons coming out to the detector, and over here you'll get more, so this side will be brighter than that side. Uh, so that's why you get that um, sort of texture there. So you, you're, um, you're not actually looking at the, the colors of the samples, you're just looking at the intensity of the electrons. But, um, if, people, if you see electron images that have got color, they'd normally um, will have been artificially sort of added just to, as a guide to the eye. So it's something that biologists um, in particular use a lot. Got pollen. Um, but then there are other analytical techniques that we use as well that do um, and have colour. So uh, I think in the first microscopy live, you guys were looking at the sort of mapping the elements that were there. So you'll have a sort of colour color scale based on the elements. Um, we also have some techniques that can tell you information about how um, crystals in your structure, which direction they're pointing in. And again, you can sort of use a colour scale to, to indicate that. But um, yeah, you can't directly tell what, what colour anything is. Um, I suppose other than maybe if you can tell what elements it's it's made of, you can sort of reverse engineer it. But uh, yeah, 
Okay, there's also another question. I'll read this out as well. If you wanted to scan the damaged, scratched and patchy in brackets, water damaged surface of a photograph, could it be done on this microscope? And what would you have to do to the photographic surface to achieve topography? And this is from Gail. Hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, so topography is not the only, only thing you can get, um, get contrasts uh, from. It tends to be in, uh, largely, that is the sort of main effect for, for secondary electrons, but it's also... Uh, depending on your um, how easy it is for the electrons to be knocked out of the sample, you'll get different contrast. And in the, the backscatter images that uh, the geologists, people like Jen and Laura and I look at a lot, they use uh, slightly different signals. The electrons have got more energy and they're the, the sort of initial electrons that were bashed into the sample coming off again. And the number of those you get off depends more on the elements that you're hitting. So if you've got a heavier element, you'll you'll typically get more of them scattered back. Uh, so you can use that to, if, if say you have a photograph, an old one that's maybe um, sort of the nitrate based ones mm. or um, often white things are titania in as well, then you can you can maybe detect, detect that. If you're looking at something that's damaged, uh, then because what you're looking at is, um, has been changed that you're not going to be able to sort of uh, correct that and actually you'll, you'll go in a lot less deeply with electrons than you would with um, uh, with light because your electrons interact a lot more with your surface you only go down uh, so we're, we're using a beam energy of uh, 10,000 volts at the moment so you might go a sort of a few um, millionths of a meter into the into the samples so you're not you're not going in very deep uh, so if you've got scratches and damage on the surface, you probably wouldn't see um, a great deal. There's some other techniques that people use um, in uh, maybe looking at manuscripts or something to uncover uh, what was there previously, but they might use x-rays or things like that that can, can probe deeper into the surface. Or maybe you're looking at what's uh, behind, you know, paint that's behind another painting that's been done. But uh, then you need to use something that can punch a bit further into your, your sample, like, uh, like an x-ray or something. I think also one of the main issues with this is obviously because we're electron microscopes look at high magnification, we tend to use really small samples. So a whole photograph, whilst probably could fit in our chamber, is probably a little bigger, bit too big of a sample to really realistically without damaging it by cutting it up or something to fit in to a microscope to actually look at. <laughs> this could be pollen, but the last time I thought I saw pollen, it turned out to be bacteria. Um, <laughs> but if Alex who has sat upstairs and is in here has an insight. If anyone in the lab's gonna have an insight, I assume it would be Alex about this. Yeah. Could be, could be. I don't know. I'll save it anyway, just in case. Hopefully. I think the bit, because we found some like fluffy bits on the sleeve on the other side when we did like a little test run yesterday. Do you remember where they were? Are they on the side? Uh... I expect them to be on that side, maybe near the end, that's where it's cut, but like, they um, feel rougher on, it was the, like on this the other side. Sort of like, sort of texture, wasn't it? Ooh. Oh, 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 that was the best I've done. Jiggle the contrast around a little bit. Oh yeah, and we saw them inside the. Uh, yeah, we were really confused about what this was, and then we thought about it more and made sense. Um, so the e. I pressed the course focus button, which is not what you want to do at five and a half thousand pound magnification. Now I uh, zoom out and check, but I presume we're now looking at a, at a hole into the. I think so. the internal... It's like that sort of felty underside for pine leaves. We're kind of like in this sort of grey patch. Or is it on the surface? Maybe it's. Some... Yeah, I don't know. It's fun though. Whatever it is. You get a bit more contrast in there. See some, see some shapes. Oh, that was too much contrast. <laughs> if I can get the focus any better. Get 
We're now just starting to see some uh, some vibrations on the image there as well. So because we're we're now twenty five thousand times, uh, depending on what's going on around the room, you can sometimes uh, pick up little wobbles. Some of our high resolution instruments, you're like if somebody slams a door somewhere or something, you'll see that the line come up. So you get very grumpy. Yes, <laughs> very annoying when that happens. Like it's more annoying when there's a building site right outside your door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last thing you want to do is jiggle your very expensive microscope that's looking at very tiny things. This one's not too bad. So then, I've just got two more, two more things to look mm -hmm. at. So one's, uh, one's in a similar, similar vein mm -hmm. to this. Found too far apart from each other. Yeah. I've got a half hour battery left on my laptop. We've timed it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most challenging thing about Microscopy Live is working which laptop to run it through, where to plug everything in, how many cameras do we need? Yeah. It's the sea of cables down here. It is. It's an absolute <laughs> mess. <laughs> um, so that was pine leaves. Uh, we also have pine cone, um, or at least one of the little fronds. Of the pine cone. Um, let's drive over. I'll zoom out so we can see it. Uh, turn the brightness up so we can actually see it. Um, I can't remember which one. So you tend to get two different ones on there, and I can't remember which it was. But if we go to like this end, we've actually got like where it's broken off, which is pretty cool. You can kind of see inside inside the tree. Really, it's wood, isn't it? This is like on the left there. We've got like this outer surface of the pine cone. A little bit contrasty. Turn that down, turn that one. I think that's okay. Maybe it's a little bit dramatic in the contrast. <laughs> I'll see what the machine thinks it should do, and then I'll see if I agree with it. That was a tad that dramatic. Was Let's turn the brightness down. <laughs> That's a bit more sensible. Yeah, we've just got the surface of the uh, sort of yeah. sticking out a bit from the pine cone that's uh, yeah. on the left and then seeing into the interior on the right. Yeah. Yeah, with breaks and splinters. So actually trying to get like one of the little fronds off a pine cone turns out it was quite hard. Um, I had to struggle a fair bit with that. <laughs> uh, so it's probably a little bit mangled. Um, that way it means we get like some nice textures from the wood there. And you see like pine cones themselves are actually pretty smooth um, on their outer surface. Um, you've got this more sort of like spongy wood on the inside. But now I'm I've got like- seeing bits of the silver paint yeah. somewhere as well. Cause uh, yeah. it was a bit, this is a big curvy one. So I was a bit liberal with the- uh, With the glue. Use the sort of conductive silver um, silver based paint to stick stuff down. Right. Have a look. Maybe a little bit chargy. So like all the microscopes, lots of ways to drive around on this one. We can click and drag on the image, which I've been doing a lot. We've got a little joystick. We've got some dials. We can click on this picture down the bottom. So there's lots of ways to do it. And everyone kind of comes up with like a favorite method. I'm a big fan of dials and buttons. So I mostly use the dials and buttons if I can yeah. help it. You can also double click on the screen to move something yeah. to the middle as well. <laughs> middle, which is really useful. Yeah. Ah. I mean, it looks like wood. I would believe that was wood if someone showed that to me. Everyone has a favorite way. It's interesting when we get students in um, to come and learn how to use these microphones. <laughs> microphones? These <laughs> microscopes is the word that they are. Um, yeah. And watching them all try and work out uh, how they like driving them around. Mm -hmm. like they start off really scared of using all the dials and the buttons. And it doesn't take very long for them to decide that actually it's quite good fun. Yeah. And for some of the microscopes, for some reason, the controls are inverted. So yeah, that's watching a new person and even an experienced person try and use it and get really confused yeah. because the control I, I drive the wrong way all the time. Yeah, I still do <laughs> as well. 
and every microscope slightly different as well. Mm, just to, yeah. Uh, that was quite good. We've got like a little sort of prongy bit. We might be able to see like inside that top layer of the bark. Yeah. See, wrong way. Yeah. You click right at the edge of the image, it goes the other way to if you clicked um, not entirely at the edge. So, yeah. It's all fun and games it. with electron microscopes. They, are, they have a lot of personality <laughs> and a lot of works. So, this is kind of like looking into that smooth bark over the top of them. Uh, so, we'll take this last picture and then we'll finish off on our fun sample. And we'll be back on time, I think. It's pretty good going. Hmm. It's quite hard to make the stick to an arrow. I get very excited about things we're looking at. Yeah. And you never quite factor in how long it takes to take a photo. I think after the session last last month, I, I think I was back still on the microscope for like half an hour or so, just looking at more stuff because yeah. I got so excited about the filter papers. <laughs> <laughs> the filter papers are really interesting. Yeah. That's quite a nice, a nice plant-based image. Right. I believe that. So if you do follow the lab on Twitter, um, you will have seen us post a picture um, of some hair along with, like, guess what this is? Yeah. Um, we did guess someone get it right. Yeah. Um, did we post I, it on Instagram as well, or was this just a Twitter one this time around? I think it was, oh, I can't remember actually. I might have put it on Instagram as well. I think I put it on Instagram as well. Yeah. We're posting um, a lot of photos at the moment. Yeah. We're doing one every day for the rest of, yeah. month, well, until Christmas. So. so, what we'll do is we'll, so we've got two um, samples here from the same animal. I'll just try and find like a nice bit to look at. Uh, try and get it in focus. Oh, that was worse. <laughs> And scales there. So this is. Oh, if anyone has any quick guesses as to which animal this has come from, it is arguably a festive animal. <laughs> <laughs> winter. It's a winter-themed animal at the very least. Anyone has any quick suggestions? If not, we will. The big reveal. Oh, let me get it in focus first, and then I'll do the big reveal. It is indeed a uh, reindeer. Yep, this is reindeer hair. So we got the sample from Dartmoor Zoo a couple of hours back. Oh, we're all growing it. <laughs> I'm loving the suggestion of Yeti. Wait, that was great if we could get Yeti hair. A couple of years ago, analysing some Yeti hair and turned out bears with mange. <laughs> or a Yeti with mange. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is um, like this is the coarser reindeer hair, so kind of like that outer coat. Yeah, there's sort of that guard fuzzy hair, little so. bit we saw previously. That's kind of like that soft inner coat. So we'll have a we'll have a quick look at this, and we'll drive over to the soft bit and like do a compare. And I believe uh, the structure of um, sort of reindeer, deer hair, and, mm -hmm. and moose as well is quite interesting. On the on the inside of those uh, these sort of big uh, guard hairs here, it's actually a sort of open structure, a bit like a sort of honeycomb. Did we um, have a cut end? I, I did cut them. I don't know if they're oh, we can find them. not sort of oriented correctly. I was worried about things poking up and uh, oh, actually, the whole piece, but uh, we might. It looks this. a bit like the inside of a bird's bone or something. Yeah, there that's we go. Honeycomb. Yeah, there we go. Oh. And I believe it's only only uh, the deer family and uh, and moose. Moose. Who, uh, I think the plural of moose is just still moose. I think moose is more entertaining. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, so yeah, you have this sort of open structure which will um, help them insulate. Uh, that, that's well. quite cool. And then those sort of downy, very fine hairs and underneath again. You trap a lot of air and uh, keep them nice and warm. Yeah, makes sense, I guess. Don't know if I've got any deer facts. Don't know. No, I'm not sure. Um, no, I actually don't think I know very much about deer. Burnt through my one, my one deer fact now. Yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting though. It's cool. Like it's very, like very fine. Right, we'll go look at the downy stuff, and then I think we can call it a day. We'll just do the final 
dramatic zoom out. Quick pan across. Of course, yeah, you click at the edge of the screen and it doesn't go where you think it should. You can see these are much, much finer. Mm. These, uh, these are really fine, aren't they? These downy hairs now. Right, now this is a very 3D thing because we're working out where is the focus for each individual part. That's pretty good, though. I think that's quite a nice shot. Mm -hmm. Trying to bit brighter, and then yeah, that's lovely. Okay, what do you think, Tom? Yeah, those cubes. But these are super, super tiny. Uh, like it feels a lot like on. wool, actually, when you're. Yeah, it's, it was really, really like <laughs> really fluffy. I should guess the idea you kind of want like a down jacket if you're a reindeer. <laughs> so you're right. We'll let this photograph finish and then that will be the end for today's Microscopy Live. Um, so thank you uh, for coming, for joining us. So our next one is the end of January. I think it's the yeah. 26th. Well, last Friday of January. Yeah, I haven't quite got the booking forms all sorted. They're just wait, they're in the ether waiting to be made live, but I will send that out. And posted everywhere once it is. <laughs> we'll advertise. And yeah, we'll be looking at pet hair. So it'll be similar yeah. to this. We might even do a dog versus reindeer comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've got some wolf hair. We've got tiger hair somewhere in the lab, which could be yeah. a good contrast. Um, but yeah, so we'll, at the very least, we'll have some dogs, various sorts of dogs, various different types of coats. Probably wrangle some guinea pig hair off Len. <laughs> uh, yeah, so worried about who's got a wolf or a bear as a pet. <laughs> <laughs> So we will call it there. I'll stop the meeting recording and I hope you will have a really nice winter break. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure to look after yourselves and we'll see you in the new year. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye everyone. Um,